Corner joints, T joints, and lap joints. These are all examples of what's referred to as a fillet weld. What is a fillet weld? Well, a fillet weld is a triangular weld that is conducted on two pieces of material that form roughly a 90 degree angle from one another. Now let's talk about corner joints. There's two basic types of corner joints. There's an open corner joint and a closed corner joint. When welding on an outer open corner joint in flat position, flat position meaning that your gun nozzle work angle is pointing straight down to the weld, you can utilize any of the techniques that you've already learned. You can do the straight push or pull, zigzag, shark tooth, or half moon. Now, as you can see, just like the V-groove butt joints that you've already been practicing on, the outer open corner joint has three very distinct lines to follow as guides moving through the weld, A, B, and C. Now, when you're talking about a closed inner corner joint, those two lines are no longer there. You actually have to visualize them as you move through the weld. Now, that brings us to a question. How big does a fillet weld need to be? To better explain the size of a fillet weld, it's a good idea to get into some basic weld terms. Normally when referring to the size of a fillet weld, it is the legs of the weld that are used for measurement. Now, I'm gonna get out of the way so we can see this more closely. The legs of the weld are the same terms that are used in basic geometry when referring to a triangle. Now, the root of the joint is what we have been referring to as the B-line, which is where the two pieces to be welded are joined together. The toes of the weld are the two edges that are formed by the puddle, what we have been referring to as the A and C edge so far. In between the two toes, you have your face. And then finally, the distance between the very middle of the face to your root is called the throat. Okay, so the size of the weld is really all going to depend on what you're making. If you're making something that isn't going to be that structural, like a coffee table, maybe a lamp, yard art, you are going to want the leg of the bead to be equal to the thickness of the material that you're welding on. This is going to be the minimum size of the bead that you want. Now, if you are making stru something structural, such as a staircase, anything that's gonna hold a lot of weight or take torsion through it, you're gonna want the throat to be equal to the thickness of the material. So, anywhere in that wheelhouse, that's what we're shooting for while you are practicing. 